Well, hello, hello, and welcome to your daily dose of body mind medicine uh, to really support you in staying safely embodied because a lot of times when we've had trauma, we leave our bodies, and when we don't feel acknowledged or heard or listened to, we often pull back and uh, stop trusting the innate intelligence of our bodies to lead us toward the people and the places and the spaces that are really there uh, to support us. And uh, what made me want to have this conversation with you, hi Ulrika, is uh, I was um, privileged to be in the company of Dr. Sean Stevenson, who if you if you know him, um, you know that he really uses his body as a chemistry set, and his his challenges, the way that he was brought birthed into the world with a degenerative disease that literally small movements broke every bone in his body. Um, it truly is inspiring in in the space. Hi, Alana, nice to see you. That the 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 easiest way to cure yourself of any kind of insecurity is first of all to stay in your body and get off your butt and um, really use your body as this beautiful instrument that you fine tune to always, always not only keep yourself safe but um, move you into a space that is nurturing and caring where you can co-create out of that place of unsafety um, which often shuts you down and if you've had any kind of shock and trauma, you know uh, the, the first thing that we do is we leave our physical bodies. So stay with me because I'm going to take you through a small exercise today. And um, also, if you if you have any questions, I would be, be honored to serve you in, um, in really showing you um, in this Facebook Live how you can start to use your body as your greatest consciousness facilitator. And um, I think one of the... One of the things that I've certainly learned for horses, um, in fact, I would go so far as to say, say that they saved me many, many times, and, and it is that the physical body doesn't lie. They're herd animals, so they're very honest and truthful in what's going on in their bodies all the time. And I know how difficult it can be when we go from a mindset that we're going, you know, maybe I need to do this, maybe I need to do that, and we're using judgments and opinions and experiences of what's happened to us in our in our life in the past, and we're not not staying present with what is now to rewrite that story. And I know it can be very confusing um, when we're we're not used to being in touch with our bodies. Um, where we've maybe spent many, many years disconnecting from the body just to keep ourselves safe and survive different environments and different situations. And that's the space where we stop listening to the body and we stop trusting in the information that we're receiving from the body. So if you can relate, give me a yes in the comments because I think one of the most important and profound lessons that horses have gifted to me over and over again is that just like a horse is not going to lie to me, my physical body is never going to lie to me. And the same goes for you because it turns out that when we're synthesizing information or feedback from each other, when we're processing what's going on with one another, we're actually only taking in this tiny, tiny bit um, like 7% of the words that we're actually speaking and the rest, 93% of the information is nonverbal. It's body language, it's tone of voices, it's in the energy that we don't really know how to talk about and it's in the felt sense of what's going on, right? The innate intelligence of our bodies. So, you know, why would our bodies and our minds be putting so much emphasis on the nonverbal information? Well, because we physically can't lie. Um, we can be convinced or persuaded towards something. We can think we know something or we can tell any story we want under the sun and trying to be speaking the truth. And the physical body, this bodysuit, will always give you an indication of its experience of how something is actually feeling to you. Does that make sense? Give me a yes. Hi, Helga. So when I realized this, um, of beginning to allow myself to start trust more, you know, that gut feeling, thank you for the love and the hearts. Um, remember, it's our gut, our enteric brain, our, our stomach brain that's actually processing and digesting a lot of the information. Um, 
it takes a lot of courage and a lot of practice to cultivate a good relationship with the information that you are receiving from your body because again our culture is 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 a very poor opposite of that you know um, it's telling us we need to make good rational decisions and we need to look at the pros and the cons of what we're going to lose or what we have to gain and that we don't have any unnecessary negative experience that's what the ego's role is and what makes us different to other animals um, and instead of going into loving and belonging which we can't survive without you know we need these things and it's very natural and normal and a very healthy thing to want and need to keep us thriving in relationship with other people and our environment so my invitation to you is that we start to get more in touch with the language of your own animal body sound good give me a, a yes in the comments thank you for the hearts i love this so fun so just remember life is not about choosing all the things that um you thought you needed and yes we all go through these cyclical different processes which are incredibly hard and heartbreaking and challenging at times and i think that those moments are very important because they are evolving us into that next state of awareness or evolve us into that next state of our lives or help us start to play um, a different note on the piano of our life um, as the conductor of our orchestra. And we can never avoid that. We're never going to make a perfect trajectory in life. It's just, it's just not possible. And it's also why, hi Thalia, I think that we're all here. So remember, we cannot avoid pain and we don't want to. But we can begin to trust in our own experiences, in our own needs. And that takes bravery. It gets courage to get in touch with the body. Because if you're trying to do it from this thing, from this prefrontal cortex, you're going to get lost every time. Because our prefrontal cortex is a great storyteller and it will give you every conversation under the sun why you can't trust your body so let's keep it to the topic of how do you trust your your body and um, in in this relationship of I want you to think back to any relationship that you might be in right now um, think of a space or perhaps it's another person or an animal or a situation or it could be a place that you have a deep profound relationship to in which you feel deeply loved safe and very very seen in every sense of the world and and see if you can access that see if there's something that comes to mind when i say it and if you if you're feeling brave enough to share type it in the comment um, so that we can learn and grow with you and maybe it's an animal or a person and they're sitting on the couch with you just imagine them being right there with you and I want you to just do a whole scan of your body so if you can just allow your body to relax to open your hands let your breath settle you you might um, want to just dis disconnect from me and close your eyes but just imagine this other relationship with this person or this animal with you, someone or something you feel incredibly safe with, with whom you feel seen and understood where there's no judgment. That's why animals are such great teachers. And now I want you to just check in. Do a, do a little physical scan with your body. We're going to just start with your feet. Notice where they're touching the floor. Notice any sensation or feeling that comes up. And it could be light, it could be intense, you might feel tingles. Maybe there's no sensation at all. Maybe your feet feel cold or numb. Just observe whatever that is. And then bring your awareness up to your calves. And just notice there, with this beautiful, safe relationship in your imagination of this person or this animal sitting right beside you, just notice, get curious of, what sensation is there? Uh, your Jaffa boy. Beautiful, Joe. Good. So just allowing the energy to move into your knees, your upper part of your legs, your hamstrings, your quadriceps. 
Notice what they feel like right now when you imagine yourself in the company of this person or this animal right next to you. And just bring your attention and awareness there and move it up now into your pelvis, your solar plexus, your womb space, your abdomen. And just notice what sensations do you notice there when you imagine this person or this dog holding space for you there. Moving it up into your chest now, into your heart space, up your throat, into your jaw. You have a lot of tension in the TMJs, so just notice what it feels like there. And then moving into the top of your head as it moves up your shoulders, into your neck, up your back. Just noticing any tension, any places where you may be holding. And I want you to just open your eyes if they were closed and type in the comments, what sensations did you notice physically in the body when you did that gentle body scan? I'll give you a few moments to just type that in. Beautiful, very supported and safe. Beautiful. Hi, Amanda and Shrida. Lovely to have you here. So just type in the comments, trust the sensations, no matter how subtle they are, that they're exactly true in the feedback that your body is giving you. And no matter what you got, maybe it was fluttering in your stomach, maybe you felt so numb that you didn't feel anything. Maybe you can feel a pulse in your neck or an ache in your jaw. Just allow yourself to open up to more receiving from your body and just feel or think about now someone that makes you feel stressed or agitated or irritable, someone that you really just don't like being around or that makes you feel contracted or brings up a lot of anxiety or anger in your body when you're in their company. And just notice if someone comes to mind <laughs> and you can just make a mental note of that or write it down. And now we're going to go through the same thing. I want you to ask you to close your eyes. Great, safe and relaxed. So now go to the opposite, Elrika. And notice this person that brings up tension, someone that triggers you, sitting on that same couch next to you. Because this is a very powerful exercise for us to do, to start to trust our body and to look at what relationships are serving us and which one's on. So just again, take a nice deep breath into your belly, close your eyes and just imagine this person that triggers you sitting next to you on your couch. And now I want you again to start with your feet, with that person that triggers you, where there's a charge, where there's tension. Just notice any sensation that comes up in your feet right now. And then moving up your, your legs into your knees. Notice what sensation or tension is there. Hi, Ina. And as you allow that energy to move through you, imagining that person that is a discomfort or a charge for you. Notice what sensations are there. Moving that energy now into your pelvis, your sits bones, your abdomen, through your rib cage, up the back of your spine, and just try to picture their face, what they might be wearing, what they might be saying to you. Just imagine them sitting fully right next to you now. And then bring your attention into your heart space, your chest, your jaw, your, your neck. And move that energy now over the top of your head. And as you do, noticing what's happening in your shoulders, the back of your spine, your shoulder blades, and up through your cranial bones. And open your eyes and just again type in the comments what sensations you experienced this time. <laughs> and if it was one of your family members, I love that quote that says, if you think you're enlightened, go and spend some time with your family. Um, just acknowledging that there's all these challenges with family members or people um, that trigger, trigger you, that are your growth partners. Just allow yourself to fit, drop into your body and notice your feelings, any overall body tension or tightness. Maybe there's constriction in your chest. Yeah, Joe, your tummy is churning. Mm. So all these places where you don't feel seen or under hood, whether it's a flutter or tightness, just allowing that to be there. 
And in any relationship now where you may be feeling challenged or triggered, I want you to really start to pay attention to your body sensations when you're with that person or in that event that might be challenging you right now. And just give yourself the patience and the presence. Maybe it's at lunchtime or a time when you can get really quiet with yourself and set a little timer with yourself on your phone to just remind yourself to maybe take two minutes over the next two weeks to just slow everything down, push pause on the world and just be open to whatever needs to be there and do a body scan. Just notice how your body is actually talking to you and ask, are you going in the direction of feeling safe and being seen and understood? Or are you going in the direction of feeling unsafe, unseen and misunderstood? And remember, this doesn't mean um, that any of these relationships are going to be like this forever. But to really begin to start to practice in the presence of the other, that is the antagonist, to really track the information that your body is giving to you. Because it's going to help you navigate a lot of challenges that are in any relationships, anywhere where there's conflict, to be able to notice that actually I'm not feeling comfortable right now, I'm not feeling safe right now, I need to slow down, I maybe need to say something about what I'm needing or maybe you need to set a boundary or whatever it might be. Or to actually let yourself, on the other end of the spectrum, recognize where you're feeling incredibly safe and deeply loved and deeply seen and held. Maybe you're feeling excited and you want to let yourself actually enjoy that connection and actually really let that in and allow yourself to open up into the heart to really connect on a deeper level and just allow that to be. So is this, if this is making sense, just give me a yes if this is helpful. Mm, my body felt heavy. You struggled to breathe, right? Hi, Glenn. Good to have you here. You might want to go back and do the exercise that we've um, just done. And I want you to just play with your body compass for the next couple of weeks and really trust the information that you're getting from your body. Uh, this is one of the top lessons that I've really learned from horses who are so sensitive to changes in their environment. And if you've ever been in the field with horses or attended one of my workshops in the field, uh, you know that horses are incredibly clear about what their needs are. Whereas in our human world, we disassociate or numb down when things are not feeling kind to um, listen to what's going on in our bodies and where this creates a whole lot of confusion um, in our bodies and in our relationship with others, um, including our businesses, right? And our family relationships and where this is how I get to show up and serve, to hold spaces for you, to get really clear on what you need, not from lack, but from a place of desire where you can start to create very loving, strong, flexible boundaries. And if that is something, hi Susan, um, that you're feeling called to, take a look at the shadow dancing classes um, that I created. It's, it's a very powerful, very short two lessons. Um, that you are going to be able to go through in your own time and look at the projections and the assumptions to look at where people may be pushing a lot of very unkind energy towards you or trying to manipulate you and to get familiar where you go into one of the five attachment styles um, in order to protect yourself and keep your body safe in relationships with others that are not aligned with your highest greatest good. So this is a, a beautiful way to start to gently reevaluate where maybe you're being pulled down into these old heavy codependent or narcissistic entanglements with other people as we start to move toward the solstice um, and the next big portal, this gateway that's opening, um, to just acknowledge and appreciate that you've been doing the work. Um, the whole of 2018 was really about re-evaluating your truth and what you stand for and who you're bringing in, calling into your life and where you need to take a stand toward what matters and moves you and how you're showing up in your life that doesn't deplete and drain you or leave you feel um, 
despair or moves you into suffering and away from living a beautiful life. So I encourage you to take a look at that. Um, it's a really beautiful, powerful way to regain your confidence in the truth in how you're showing up when you're willing to be the observer and um, dance in the shadows and look at everything that is coming at you as there to grow you and not go into feeling trapped or shut down because you're feeling trapped. And remember, you can't create from a space of feeling unsafe. Um, you get stuck in these sort of lower rung of Maslow's theory, that very bottom rung, where you're looking for safety, where you're looking for connection, and you cannot move up into your, your pelvic area, into your um, sexual chakra, which is the element of um, co-creation. It's the womb space where you create your life from. So please take a look at the shadow dancing classes as, a, as an entry point to really get solid on what you stand for and where you're not perhaps standing up for your life. And look at what it's costing you to not actually know what you want. And remember, your, your body, your mind is always looking for all the visible proof, all the stories of what you have to lose. So perhaps a, a better question is to look at, will this contribute to my life? Is this person or opportunity a contribution or is it something that's going to move you away from that? So, you know, being your greatest um, consciousness facilitator as your body is, have a look at that. Um, and have the courage to care enough about yourself, about your own needs, and look at where you can form deeper, safe um, connections. You know, I think this is the, the path we're all walking right now, um, where we are really starting to create a diff very different form of relationship. And yes, it's challenging, but the payoff is huge when you actually make yourself your number one priority and if you're not again as Sean Stevenson says if you're not showing up in your life if you're not taking a stand don't be so selfish so try this practice over the next few weeks and just cultivate the willingness to really get in in touch with all the nuances of the way your body is actually talking to you because once you start to become aware of the feedback and you learn to trust it then eventually um, you're going to be able to act on it sooner. You know, this is where you begin to future the life that you want and you're going to be able to start to be able to speak to your own needs and um, take the time to actually do that. And also, um, you want to create an environment in which you get to be your whole self, um, not some social version or some... Um, you know, one key that you're supposed to play along or one role that, that, that is taking you out of your essence of your true nature. And I really don't believe that we need to stay in the programming and the suffering of that. Um, so remember too that you can call in the energy of horse if you don't have access to a real living sensitive horse um, teacher. Um, you can call that in, in your visualizations, in your um, meditation. Um, and you can still connect with that soft animal body that's always with you. It's always guiding you. Remember, your body never, ever lies and it will never make you wrong. So if you leave nothing more than the, the surety and the trust of this little Facebook Live that your body is always your greatest consciousness facilitator. And then my work here is done. So um, for those of you that are joining me on the equine massage um, workshop tomorrow, no, on Saturday, I look forward to meeting you. Um, and if you're, you're wanting to um, create a, a space in your neighborhood or your area um, in the company of horses, uh, my workshop Being Heard, I teach it all over the world um, because it really is a beautiful space of allowance that the horses give to us to, to really take a look at where we're holding those old patterns and programming and belief systems and stories that are keeping us stuck in a place where either we shut down or we become hyper vigilant and we cannot create from a space of fight or flight and you know, this is why working with herd animals is just oh, just such such an honor and a privilege um, to be able to be in their company so um, 
find out where there is a field of horses perhaps in your neighborhood and, and just go and sit with horses and again do this quiet gentle exercise that I just led you through of body scanning um, to see where you're holding tension in your body. I'm always so amazed when I'm working with people and holding space with horse um, out in the field that so often a horse will mirror exactly what it is that you are not willing or cannot see uh, because you've been shut down or hyper vigilant for so long and they'll come and put a a muzzle, you know, gently muzzle your shoulder saying, go on, I'm holding space, it's safe for you here to just let that go. And um, just on, on that too, just remember there are many, many ways that you can get to create a space of safety for yourself and grow up your child parts from the safe, secure adult that you are being. Um, and one of the, the, the most powerful ways as well to do that is just through uh, somatic breath work. So I have some really exciting things coming um, to really support and guide you in, in stepping into your true nature and really taking a stand for, as I said, the things that matter and move you. And I always say, hurt people hurt people. Um, so when you are able to feel that is the opportunity that you give to yourself. When you make yourself your number one priority, you get to give yourself that space and sense of safety so that you can access the divine intelligence of your body and then start to heal all the um, mutations and miasms on your ancestral and inherited, inherited lines of belief systems and um, intergenerational trauma that you might be ha ha might be holding on to um, in an effort to try and transmute or move that for future generations that you are the ancestors for. So I hope that this has been helpful. Oh, thank you, Joe. I I, you know it is just it's just always such a such a privilege for me to show up and and serve in in the way that I know um, that we don't have to stay in a state of suffering um, this is really the time to step out of those old stories and and rewrite um, your pathway from this beautiful intentional space of being present being in your body so that you can create a brilliant future um, it's already in your Akashic record uh, you know when that when when I was in the ocean swimming with the spinner dolphins who are constantly sonaring and blasting our bodies with this beautiful high vibrational healing energy and hearing the whale song as a as they retold the story of our human Akashic record um, all these great sentients who who are in their own amount of challenge in in um, you know in in everything that that's happening of the loss of habitat of where they are being seen as a food source rather than this great wise teacher um, we need to care about ourselves we need to take care of our body self-care again this is one of the things Sean Stevenson's really really kept urging people to stay in, um, to, to, to see your body as um, not better or worse than somebody else's body, but just as different as the vehicle that you created to bring your work and your wisdom and your talents and gifts and capacities into this world as only you can. And if we're not practicing self-care, if we're not caring for ourselves, we cannot care. Um, for the things that we are taking a bigger stand for. So make yourself a priority. Um, nurture and tend to your inner garden. Listen to what your body has to teach you. If you would just slow down, quieten the mind, and listen to this ancient and very beautiful wisdom of our um, innate intelligence that ha that's held in every cell of our being. Um, and the space in between. And I would love, love, love to hear what you're going to do to take a stand for self-care and more self-love and more compassionate self-inquiry as you move through your week. Um, I couldn't show up and do um, this Wellness Wednesday Facebook uh, live yesterday because Facebook crashed. So again, it's just like, who would you be if you were standing in this highest, greatest version of yourself that is part of that telepathic, right? That that um, 
nonverbal communication that you don't actually need technology as wonderful as it is it can also become an addiction to take you out of feeling what your body is feeling right now so put the phone down <laughs> switch off the television and go out and and go and dance or just hug a tree or put your feet in the grass or plant something beautiful get your hands dirty and let all those beautiful generous microbiome that are in the soil feed your soul through live nourishing food and beautiful people and conversations that lift you up and um, that really see you in the greatest divine nature that you are and I will meet you there uh, don't forget just as a side note um, I spoke about this more uh, with Zara Rose on her summit which is airing today and I've got a lot of, of beautiful invitations coming up over the next couple of weeks as I continue my walk about my rite of passage to to really again reevaluate um, what I'm calling into my life and what I really invite you uh, to take a stand for with me is to surround yourself with people that lift you up and and see you and let the animals contribute to that as well hi Alan good I can't wait um, to support you in your journey um, and Max as well um, your your beautiful kitty cat um, and for those of you who don't know I am offering um, one hour um, you could probably say it's more like 90 minutes of um, life mind hacks on steroids my eyes on your business and when I talk about business I talk about um, right relationship with your joy of being and that you don't have to go into the hustle or the you know the old paradigm of pushy sales and getting butts and seats and all those things that are very unkind to my body it's a very counterintuitive way to really start to be of more service um, to write bigger checks right to invest in yourself so that you can be that example for other people to show up in what you're offering and what your services are um, and paying you well because you're valued and you're giving a service that 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 is delivering results so um, ask me about that PM me um, if that's something that interests you um, there's a couple of weeks and a couple of spots left for that and um, you know my normal rate for working one-on-one -on -one like this is normally three hundred three hundred dollars and I've had people pay me a lot of money to get the kind of um, resources that I can see from my intuitive capacity of right relationship in how you're creating conscious business so take advantage of that offer it's only hundred and eleven dollars up until the end of March and I would be honored honored to serve you in, in any capacity and move you out of your way and get your get you out of your butts right get back into your body and get co-creating your life in a way that lights you up and 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 brings more joy into the world because that's how we're going to make a difference not through staying in the old stories of suffering and trauma and I'll meet you there all right. Have a beautiful day or night wherever you are. I love you. Bye. Mwah. And this is so weird because every time the last two days I've been doing Facebook Lives and uh, when it comes to ending, ending um, the Facebook Live, there's no way to end it. So um, thank you for joining me. Hi, Todd and Darlene and Alan. I love you guys so much. Um, I hope you found this helpful. And um, yeah, what would it take for <laughs> for me to be able to to actually end this um, live transmission? I've had a lot of visitations from my my spirit team. Um, the Greys especially have been uh, really making their appearance uh, to me more visible. Um, they're not cloaking themselves as much. Um, because we are able and willing and ready ready to see them so that's exciting and that's something else for another conversations but um, I'm curious too if you've had more visitations from spirit um, if you're starting to see more more energetic um, team players um, guides showing up to help you I'd love to know who they are and um, what their message is to you as I still continue to try and end this Facebook live haha <laughs> I have no idea how to do this so I hope I don't lose um, lose this communication hmm 
Oh dear, it says if I reload the site, changes may not be... Huh. Interesting. Hi, Linda. Loving your new puppy. So beautiful. If you have any questions about what we talked about today, let me know. Um, yeah, technology has been interesting for me lately. Um, and I'm not blaming Mercury retrograde. Um, I did a whole nother Facebook Live around the this energy of Cetus, which is um, not the heaviness of retrograde, but really another invitation to um, listen, listen to your body, listen to the wisdom and the medicine of, um, of Cetus and the cetaceans who are really showing up in, in ways that um, I would rather they don't in beaching themselves and being killed and massacred for us to wake up. But I'm just so deeply grateful for that too. All right, I don't know how to do this. Let's see. Hmm. Come on, Facebook. I know they did something yesterday. It was down the whole day. Huh. Come on. Nowhere to end. Someone told me the other day, this was the, the, the Greys telling me <laughs> that they were really, really um, supporting me in this message. But... Um, so if it is the grays, if it is the ETs, thank you. I hear you. I honor you. Could we please end this live transmission? And come on, guys, put your phone down. I see you're all still sitting here with me. <laughs> Go play. Go stroke your dog or cuddle your cat. Kelly, hi. Um, we're finished for today, so I encourage you to go back in and listen. Isn't it, Alan? Crazy, crazy times. Um, oh, your parents keep coming. How beautiful. Oh, I love it. Birds are such incredible messengers. Um, you know, Crow has been telling me a lot that um, they're the messengers. They're, they're taking flight and carrying the information of what's happening in the morphic field um, to, their, to their, the fellow sentience around the earth so that they can, can also really start to shout at us <laughs> to really uh, take heed and, and, and change some of the ways that we're, we're doing life, um, make more conscious choices. And um, it is, it's pretty crazy. Um, but they're so patient and generous with us, aren't they? I love that. All right, guys. Um, hmm. I, I don't know. Um, I have no idea what's going on here. Ha! <laughs> Toodles. Enjoy, El Elrica. Fun, fun, fun. All right. I'm going to end this and hope it saves. Love you guys. Bye.